if anyone is joining us through the recording, hey, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Um, chat is going to be part of that recording, so everyone will get to share the information. If you're sending your chat, please send it to all participants, and that way everyone can see what everyone is uh, sending back and forth. I'm Nancy Dowd. I am Product Manager for LibraryWare. And today we're going to be hearing from Leah Sewell. Now she's a communication editor for Topeka Shawnee County Public Library. And she has made quite a name for herself as a woman of immense talent and creativity. And I'm not saying that just on my own. That is actually a quote from a website. She is the editor chief of Topeka's Arts and Entertainment Magazine 785. She's been that for five years. She's also the founding editor of Topeka Family and Lifestyle Magazine XYZ. She was awarded the 2010 Women Making Headlines Award for her work in the media by the Topeka Association of Women in Communications. And she is a published author with her chapbook, Birth in the Storm, which was a 2013 winner of the Emerge Publications Chapbook Competition. Today's webinar is sponsored by Novelist, and I think most of you are familiar with our company. We create products that help librarians connect with readers. We have Novelist Plus and K8 that provide reading recommendations. Select, Novelist Select enriches libraries catalogs. And Library Aware that helps you reach your readers with widgets on your website, print items such as flyers, reading maps, and bookmarks, and of course, newsletters and e -blasts. And the newsletters and eblast is exactly why we asked Leah to speak today. We are always looking for people in the field who are successfully applying the strategies that here at Novelist we believe and at Library Wear we build our product around. And Leah is doing just that. You are going to hear her strategies, her thinking, see some really fabulous designs today. And all of that has really made uh, her e-newsletter a, a hugely popular communication tool to reach the users. Um, so without further ado, Leah, see well. Hi, everybody. Um, good afternoon. Thanks so much for coming to the webinar today. And I wanted to offer my thanks to Nancy, Lori, and the crew at Library Aware for inviting me to present. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Leah Sewell, and I'm going to tell you a few things about me. Okay, so I'm the communications editor for the Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library, which basically means that I'm a storyteller. I observe, collect, and create the library's stories. I come from, as Nancy said, a publishing and magazine background, and so I'm lucky to be able to bring my passion for all things that are literary and writerly to library communications and marketing. I have an MFA in writing from the University of Nebraska, and I'm the author of one book of poetry with another forthcoming soon. I'm also a graphic designer, and I have a very healthy obsession with books, podcasts, art, vintage furniture, and from scratch cooking. But my favorite author, and I hate that question, but if I had to answer, I would probably say Margaret Atwood. That's a hard, it's a hard question to answer. I think everybody knows that. Now, um, I'm going to brag on my library for a little bit. We serve a population of 179,000 people. Our annual circulation is 2.3 million. We have over 100,000 cardholders, and we have a staff of 225. Um, we are kind of awesome. I have to say that Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library has a great bookmobile service. Uh, we go all around the county, and we have 20 stops a week. We are heavily engaged in our community in so many ways. It's um, too lengthy to explain here. Um, people often refer to us as the crown gem of Topeka, and whenever they speak about us, they always say, my library. Um, you can learn more and see our whole story at our website, which is tscpl.org. Okay, so now let's talk about the marketing that we're doing at our library. Um, we have a publication called Library News. It's a 16-page newspaper that we um, write the content for, um, do all the graphics for, and we, we work on that once every eight weeks. Um, it's delivered to 80,000 homes in Shawnee County. Um, we also run a bustling social media presence. We have 6,000-plus followers on Twitter. 
14,500 likes on Facebook. And Instagram, which is kind of in its infancy still, it's only um, been going for about a year, Has we have about 800 followers on Instagram. Um, I take, uh, we take care of all the library PR, promotions and print needs, and we are a busy, busy three-person department with the communications and marketing director, myself, and a graphic designer. Um, we also produce videos, we create website content, and last but never, never least, we produce an e-newsletter. And that is called Library News Update, and it goes out every two weeks. So, we're kind of busy. Why in the world would I add email marketing to my to-do list when I'm already writing a lot of content, I'm already creating newspapers, I'm communicating in so many different ways? Actually, it's a priority at our library. Um, if it doesn't go out for some reason, I'm sick or something happens, people demand an explanation. <laughs> um, they want to know why it hasn't gone out because it's a very successful tool in our marketing arsenal here at the library. Um, let me tell you why email marketing is such a great tool to have. Um, this is some infographics from a really great website that I use, um, Reagan.com. I also recently attended one of their conferences, which I highly recommend, but um, it will show you that the number one online activity across all demographics for all adults is email. Um, 74% of people age 18 to 29, that's their, um, that's their preferred media usage for commercial use is through email. Um, people are saying that that's, that's the way that they want to be communicated to um, by organizations, by companies. Um, it's definitely the most popular online activity. So your audience is already there. They're already lurking in their own inbox waiting for that next email to come. Um, it's a great thing also because it's measurable. Uh, you can track how many people have opened your email. Um, the, the return on, on investment is apparent. Um, you, can, you can see what people have clicked on. Um, people tend to communicate back to you. They tend to share. Um, you can see uh, how successful your communications are. Um, it's also very easy. Um, there's automated email, um, there's templates that you can use with Libraryware or other um, email services to populate your email with content. Um, you can curate lists of people, um, card holders obviously, um, also sublists of people who maybe are more interested in your art gallery or want to know particularly about um, children's activities or teachers in the community or the media. But the bottom line is that it's what customers want to hear from us. Um, and if the content of the email is good and helpful, then customers can easily refer back to it when it's in their inbox. Um, it's consumed on their own time. They can choose not to receive it by unsubscribing. And it tends to be richer, more important, resourceful content than those fleeting social media messages that we scroll through that are designed to grab your attention at any and all costs. Okay. With email marketing, you can also do some segmentation. That's all of your users are interested in particular things. Um, we have lists for gallery visitors with local artists and art enthusiasts. We recently sent out a campaign to them to enter into our printed image competition reach to them specifically. We'll send a reminder email um, for them to enter pretty soon that's already scheduled. Um, we have library industry media outlets that if we want to share library news um, that's important to the industry. We have a list of genealogists in the community and local organizations. We have school media specialists. Um, we, we have media outlets. Um, and we even have more particular lists such as our Zinio users. So when we switched to Flipster, we were able to communicate with those uh, 200 and some people specifically saying, hey, um, we're switching from Zinio to Flipster and here's what you need to know. And it's, uh, it's just a, a great way to communicate with a particular group of people. <clears throat> so one of the most important things about your email <clears throat> is the subject line. And that's the first thing people see in their inbox. 
and we get a lot of email a day. I know everybody out there is nodding their head. Um, yes, hundreds of emails a day, some of them useful, some of them not. Um, we want to grab their attention, obviously, with a subject line. And here are some pointers that I've noticed um, from my years of using email marketing about subject lines. That some of this is supported online by um, communications websites. Some of it's not. Um, this is just my, my opinion and my take on it. I think, number one, you need to keep it brief. Less than 30 characters is good. And the, probably the most important thing is to tell them, use the subject line to tell them what's inside. Um, we don't want to trick somebody by luring them into the email and then what you talked about in your subject line isn't present inside the email. Um, here I had five events. Um, and then when they open the email, there are your five events that we're talking about. New books. We've got a, our bestseller list. Um, recently populated, check them out. Um, your report, that's going to contain some data about their usage at the library, some circulation statistics and things of that nature. And I wanted to do a quick aside about data. Um, our audience absolutely loves data. Um, they want to learn about how themselves and, and others are using the library. My most popular emails had subject lines like, what you read in 2014, and where you checked out. Um, and that, of course, contains some data about their usage of the library. And people were curious about their own behavior. So there's this element of navel gazing to it. They want to learn more about themselves. Um, it's just, it's important to make the library story about them rather than just about us. Um, also, the subject line, thank you is universally uh, across the board the most opened email subject line. So if you have something really important to share with your library customers, use thank you. Um, you make it a chance to say thank you to your, to your patrons. And if you um, have something really important to say that goes along with that, then, then do it. Because that, that one's going to get opened pretty, pretty um, certainly it's going to get opened. But don't overuse. Um, the thank you or the, you, you want to change up your subject line depending on what your content is. Um, it's smart not to use gimmicks like using the forward symbol or the, um, the respond symbol to entice people to open. If you use gimmicks, people are going to smell that from a mile away and say, you tricked me and that's misleading and that's cheap. Um, we're not spamming people, we are engaging them in a conversation about the library and telling them stories. So an, another tip um, about subject lines would be to experiment with emojis. Um, use exclamation points when they're appropriate. Use brackets and parentheses. Those types of things are going to stand out um, when people are scrolling through their inbox. They're going to say, oh, it's this from the library. Somebody's really excited about this. Or, you know, there's an emoji. What's going on? This one's going to stand out in that, in that long, long list of emails. So the idea is to make them curious enough to open the email, right? Okay, so Leah, yes. hi, it's Nancy. Listen, Julia Heisel wanted to know how you generate the data for your report emails. These are, um, can you just cover that just a little bit? Sure, sure. Um, every month in our board packet, um, our community services manager, Thad Hartman, develops infographics and circulation statistics using Excel spreadsheets. And so when we present that to the board, that information is available on our website and to the public. Um, but with this, I, I go in and I look and I say, wow, uh, we had 90,000 attendances last year. I'm going to share that with people. And I'm going to title that email, your, your attendance report. And, you know, just to, to get people in to show them, you guys are great at attending events. Um, so I'm just kind of getting information from different branch, um, different departments in the library, um, using everything that we have to tell the library story. That's then, excellent, excellent. Okay, and and I use an email service that makes it real easy to build. Um, and every email service out there, including, including Library Aware, is going to make it easy to build. You don't have to be a designer to use an e-newsletter service. Um, but the visual possibilities are endless. Use the content that you've already created for your flyers, your website, your prints, 
print newsletters, um, even your, your display shelves, use it inside your e-newsletter. So the more that your audience sees that same imagery and those same messages, the more that of a chance that you have for those messages to sink in. Um, link back to your website, link back to your catalog. Um, Library Aware e-newsletters have some ready-made reader's read advisory that make it incredibly simple to share info about your collection. Um, you want to you want to drive them back. Um, it's super easy to create once you have your content in place. So, so let's Leah, talk about, yeah. Leah, a question has come up with how many emails are too many in what amount of time? Uh, Mark Amorosi is saying that they began using constant contact, and the temptation seems to be to resort to using it all the time. Do you have? Yeah, some... I do have an opinion about that. Okay, um, good. I. I am very, um, I'm certain that the way that we do it is, is pretty pretty good. We do it once every um, every other week. And so I feel like that's not really spamming people. That is, um, that's making it, so we're just kind of checking in. We're just kind of saying hi. Um, when it comes to those other segmented lists and things, um, we really only reach out to them when there's something super important that we want them to know. Um, we do have a Friends of the Library newsletter, and that goes out four times a year. So I would say, you know, our neighbor to the east, Lawrence Public Library, they send one out every Sunday night, which is a non-invasive time to send to somebody's inbox. They're not battling to get their work emails taken care of. Um, so I think that that's totally appropriate once a week, um, but you, you do want to consider the time that you're sending it to people. Um, you don't want to send them once a week at 10 a.m. on a Monday, they are super buried um, at work at that time, typically. So you have to take that kind of stuff into, into account. Um, and yeah, don't spam people. Make sure that you're sending good content that they're going to appreciate in a manner that is not going to feel over overbearing, OK? <clears throat> so um, I did just talk about Lawrence and some other inspiration way back in the day when I was um, learning how to use uh, email for marketing with my, one of my magazines, um, I saw this email come through from um, a literary magazine that I subscribed to, and it's called Paper Darts, and it's located in Minneapolis. And I just thought, wow, they are using some gorgeous images in their e-newsletters, and they have a masthead, um, a, a header image at the top that says their name, and it's consistent with with what they send out every week. You kind of know what to expect. There's some, some pretty buttons um, over here. We've got poetry and fiction and, and some, some prominent links to click on those things. And it really felt like a magazine rather than you know, a stuffy newsletter that, that was sent um, to convey that information. So that kind of jump-started me in thinking, I can use some really cool images and make this really pretty. Um, I just mentioned Lawrence Public Library, which is our, our neighbor and our friends to East. And I think they do a lot of really good stuff with their e-newsletter as well. Um, they have great big images. Uh, here they used uh, Why is the Library Your Spot, where they're quoting customer um, comments about the library. So again, making it the story about the customers rather than about just us at the library. Um, I also learned from the Lawrence Public Library that animated GIFs are really fun in e-newsletters. Um, they catch your eye and they just make it, they just give it some variety and color. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's a really good idea to subscribe to other libraries' newsletters, um, e-newsletters, so that you have inspiration just constantly coming into your inbox. Um, I had to do research one time on the Mount Prospect public library in Illinois, and um, in part of that research, I subscribed to their newsletter, and they're doing a fabulous job. Um, even though I don't, I'm not going to uh, attend their events, and, and I don't use their library, I still get inspiration from them, um, and I, I think it, it makes me think about what I'm doing with my newsletter. Okay. And this is the header, the teaser portion of the email that I make. Um, you can find it at tscpl.org slash news um, and follow the link to the e-news. We've got examples up there. 
Um, but this to me is really the, the place where I hook them in. And so I try to make it as fun as possible. And you'll see that our brand is consistent every time we have our library news header at the top. It's the same image that arrives in their mailbox in their library news print newsletter. Um, I keep that, that front content super entertaining, light and fun because I want them to continue to scroll through everything else that we're communicating. So that first part is I usually will use a meme or a cool picture or a comic. Um, I'll create some fun graphics to pull them in. Um, and part of the success for me on that is just being on Pinterest and following cool book love boards and, and following different photography things and, and just kind of stowing away my content. I'm, I'm always on the lookout for it. I'm talking about branding. Um, that masthead, that, that header at the top, this is our um, Friends of the Library e-news, which, like I said earlier, goes out four times a year. And you can see that the branding is consistent. It's slightly tweaked, so we have a date real big at the top. Um, we have the Friends of the Library um, logo up there along with the news, because it is news. Um, it's just slightly tweaked, but it, again, it's consistent. Um, they understand immediately that this is official communication coming from the library. Um, a, a note on the tone, see we're talking about funds here and money, so the tone is a, a bit more somber. Um, the content is more informative and it's less for entertainment purposes. Um, but again, it's, the branding is consistent, it looks official, it looks nice and clean, and it's, you know, pleasing to the eye. So what is the kind of content that I put into the main body of the email? Um, this is where we feed them our messages, and a lot of the a lot of work goes into making sure that those messages are packaged in an appealing, fun, engaging way. So this is already content, like I mentioned before, that exists in our print newsletter. It's already being produced on our website, and we're recycling it in e-newsletter form, um, in colorful, um, with big images and animated gifts and things that are that are fun. But it's the same content that, that we're using across the board. So what they say it sometimes takes 13 impressions for a message to sink in in today's distractible world. And the e-news gets our message out for yet another impression. And it's a touch point with our customers that builds library awareness, hand delivered to people's inboxes where they're already checking their email consistently. So here we have some RA about um, gardening books, very timely this time of year, that our librarians had already created a record set on Polaris that I used to put this out. Um, we're switching over to Biblio Commons soon, so we're going to have a lot of really good RA um, to push out to our, our customers. Um, we've got a bestseller list. We have a blog by our um, systems administrator, Shannon, who's a mo movie nerd. And she writes a blog for our website called Movie Mind, and in which in this in this one she disses um, she, she disses the actor, and so uh, I had to use a gift there. And then we also, of course, promote events um, and things that are upcoming at the library. But we don't focus mainly on events. We um, we like to talk about our collections and our services first and foremost, because those things are. Um, evergreen. They, they're always there and we want people to come in for, for those things and then to attend our events as well, of course. Um, at the end of the e-news, we have another fun thing, which again is going to get people to scroll all the way through, and this is our trivia time question. Um, and the, the trivia answer is usually the number one most clicked thing which is fine because it delivers people straight to our website. Um, as soon as they click on CD Answer, they get information about our trivia program. Um, they get the answer to the trivia question, and they also get a link to, um, in this case, some tongue twisters that they can check out for their kids at the library. So always drive that traffic back to your site. Um, you can use quizzes. I've used quizzes before. You can use memes, GIFs, videos, um, 
but always, again, bring that content back to your library's website and your services and your collections. Okay, so we already had talked about subject lines, and here's a few more tips and tricks that I'm going to um, give you just from my experience. Um, we want to keep in mind a mobile-friendly design. I prefer to do um, one central column with big images, and that way um, it's easier to, to look at on your mobile device. You want to keep it kind of short um, because some email services will truncate your email. Um, I know that Gmail does, uh, which I use, and I always send an email to myself so I can see what it looks like on my smartphone. Um, you want to use buttons um, instead of links, hyperlinks. And I've got a few um, examples on here of the buttons. I want to read it, what my library is doing, and take me to the review. Um, those are easier for people to, to press with their thumb on their mobile device, which, you know, a ton of our, our traffic and opens come from mobile devices. Um, so make it easier for them to hit those links. Um, the images that you use should be big, they should be simple, um, not a lot of text on them, it's going to be harder to see that because it's going to be small on those small screens. You want the, them to be pretty. Um, you want your email to be pretty. Your text should be short and sweet. So write with just, just enough information to pique their curiosity and then give them a nice big button that they can click. And these buttons, which I've used as an example, they use the I rather than the U, and those just consistently have a higher click rate. Um, People are experiencing things as, as themselves, and they're, they're going to click those buttons with the I rather than the U more often. They're, they're kind of irresistible, and it makes the message about them again. Okay, and then at one point, I kind of take a step back and ask myself, what are we actually doing here? What are our important messages? What do we wish our customers would do more of? What are the things they routinely say they didn't know about? What, um, to take an even bigger step back, what is our library's mission? Um, if Reader's Advisory is a huge priority at your library, your e-news should reflect that. Um, our strategic goals include literacy and community engagement. We include a lot of RA. We include community events, and we're always seeking to engage people with the library via services, collections, outreach, and also just a sense of pride and identity that they have a feeling connected to their library. Um, our content across the board is catering to those ideas. Okay, and now a writerly interlude. So um, just a little reminder that I am first and foremost a writer, and so I do have some tips about writing, and I'm going to get up on my writer's soapbox now. How your email is written is super duper important. Um, you'll want to keep that same tone throughout each email. Um, so if I were to describe my library, I'd say my library is casual, my library is friendly, my library can be kind of snarky sometimes, but very intelligent. Um, this tone builds my library's personality, and it's consistent. It's a consistent voice through every email. So that way when they're opening up their email, it's like a person that's showing up in their inbox and they're having a conversation with you. Uh, I can't, can't emphasize enough that you should write short and you should write snappy. You should use bright, energetic verbs. Watch out for your passive language. Um, don't copy and paste a whole program description into your, your email. Shorten it significantly. And if the reader is interested, they will click on the link where they can find out more information. Not everything is going to appeal to every person who opens the email. Okay, so what is the return on investment? Um, let's look at some data. Okay, so the e-news drives web traffic. That's the number one. Um, you can see here where these points are um, on this graph that these are sessions that happen when the e-news went out. Um, it goes out every two weeks, and boom, it drives traffic. It drives um, lots of traffic to our website. And here at the bottom, you can see um, for March, uh, you can see there's a comparison to the week before. 
So the orange line is the, is the web traffic the week before, and then the blue line is the web traffic when, and you can see the spike when I sent out the e-news. Um, so that's compared against a typical Thursday. It goes out once a, every two weeks, and you can see, bam, there's this big spike. And this is not, um, um, oh, I, do, I do need to tell you guys one caveat with the e-news software that I use is that some email programs will automatically show images inside the email. Um, so there's like a beacon that gets turned on for your open rate when, um, when they click on that image, show images. So uh, some of the data um, that comes inside the email software is not 100% accurate. I encourage you to use your Google Analytics, focus on where it's driving traffic, focus on, you know, are, is this or that book being checked out more because we focused on that book. And really just library awareness increase, um, just having a conversation with your customers on a routine basis. Um, and so it's not a fluke thing. Um, that email that we sent out in March wasn't like a super special email. This is consistent every time. It's driving good traffic. This is from the one I sent out um, actually two weeks ago. I'm due to send out another today after I get done with this webinar. And um, you can see, again, the orange line is from a week before and how many sessions we have on our website. And the increase from me sending out the e-news was 23% over the week prior. So it's a huge, huge difference. Um, and it's really consistently driving traffic to our site and getting people that message. And they're clicking. Um, another good thing about the e-news is that it reaches everyone. So when I send it out to um, library customers, those customers are the mayor. They are the guy who's on the, the, the newspaper editorial board. And this is an example of when that happened. Um, somebody who, who was on the editorial board at our local newspaper received the e-news, and he got excited about all the things that we were mentioning, and he went to his editorial board, and they agreed to do an, an, a very positive editorial about our library. Um, and then they got in touch with us and said they had found it in the e-news. So it, it cuts out the middleman in some ways. You don't necessarily have to go out of your way to network, which is, of course, great, but you're reaching, you know, the, the big guy and the little guy with, with the e-news. And in our case, it goes out to over 40,000 um, library card holders. And of those 40,000 people, you know, if 20 to 30 percent of those people open it, that's going to include some important people who can become uh, library leaders and power users and speak on behalf of the library in a positive way. Okay. So when we say check out ebooks and we say it in many different formats, we're saying it in print, we're saying it on social media, we're saying it in the e-news, and we're saying it on our website, and we're saying that same thing consistently in a variety of mediums, always trying to look for that way that we can put a fun spin on it. It makes our message echo so that it's finally heard by people. So here we have like these two hipsters sitting in the cafe. And they know all about ebooks, duh, because they've heard it so many times. They've seen it on Facebook, they've seen it on Instagram. Um, we have tweeted about it, and it's, it's arrived in their mailbox, and they have it on their coffee table. So it makes it really easy when you speak in all these different ways about the same things, and then just make it fun. Okay, so for me, what does success look like? I think this depends on who you are as a, as a marketer. Um, for me, obviously we want a successful open rate, but if I get 20 to 30% of people open my stuff, then you know that's 15,000 people who have chosen to receive information from me. And again, sometimes those numbers are skewed by the, um, the email trackers that don't show us every open. Um, so am I gonna rely on that information to pat myself on the back? Not really. Um, I'm more about making sure that we're having a conversation with them. I'm not working for a bookstore. I don't want them to follow a link to our catalog and check out a book. That's not my point. Um, I think if they get to our catalog, that's totally a success right there. Um, it's not really about selling. Our goal is to simply get them in the door and get the library in top of mind awareness. 
So we want them to do more, read more, learn more, and interact with us more. And the first step is to remind us, to remind them that we exist. Um, it's hard to measure. Again, we can look at Google Analytics and determine that yes, our e-news is driving web traffic, but that's only part of a bigger equation. But I will tell you one success story where I was like, hey, all right, this is a success story. And that's when I became a used car salesman. <laughs> and I used the e-news um, to sell a bookmobile. And that wasn't really my goal. Um, I, my subject line was want to buy a bookmobile. I thought people might think it's fun um, to, to think of the library selling a bookmobile. That was past its due date. And um, it was advertised on na in, in a national auction site that has uh, buyers in Canada and throughout the United States. Um, but what happened was that a local person bought it because they saw it in the e-news. <laughs> So um, that's, uh, that's a, pretty, uh, a pretty good sell there. That's a that's pretty good um, indication that I was successful. Um, and we heard, we, we hear from happy people all the time. That's always an indication of success. Here's our um, finance officer talking about the purchaser of the bookmobile who was a library cardholder new to the community and had just received their first e-news and was telling us how great of a library we had, and now he owns a piece of history of that library. So what a welcome to the community for him. Um, here's another email back from somebody who just wanted to tell me how they feel about the library and, and how it lifts up her life and how, you know, how, she, how much she loves it, and, and that's always wonderful. Um, I, you know, I've had people just, just respond so positively to the e-news that goes out. And really it is, it's a conversation. Um, they feel like they're reaching a person. They feel like they're having a conversation with us. Um, this is the most recent one I received on um, April 27th. Pretty simple, just awesome newsletter. We love you and that's always good to hear. Well, sometimes there are unhappy people. Um, this was one I got recently from a fellow named Jeremy um, who just wanted to tell me that to, you know, to beat it. He, he did not like his e-news. Um, and that's fine. People can always unsubscribe, and I'm happy to unsubscribe from people uh, for them if they don't know how to do that. Um, and so we take all kinds of responses to the e-news, but very, very rarely are they negative. Um, and then here I have an example of just one user and this is my sister's um, response to the e-news. I know she's a, she's a power user at our library, and she just recently had a baby. And you can see down at the bottom that she opened um, the library news update that I sent to her, and then she kind of petered off and she stopped opening them. And I give her, you know, criticism about this jokingly, but she just had a baby, and he's not a very good sleeper. So she's not going to open her email probably unless, you know, she really gets bored or, and that's not happening with the, with the new baby. So don't be discouraged when people don't open the email every time. Sometimes there's just things going on in their lives um, and they'll come back to you when they're ready to use that information. Why would we want them to open it if they're just going to delete it as quickly as they do? So um, I still give her, I still give her some criticism about it though. She can open my emails, they're from me. Um, but they don't have to go outside of their inbox looking for that information. It's fed to them, much like most advertising and information is fed to people nowadays through social media feeds. But unlike Facebook, your email content is not mitigated by those frustrating algorithms and how many likes you have and whether or not your engagement is on key today. This is straight from you to them and your email is always delivered. So um, at our library, people are opted in when they provide their email address on their library card application. And so this is how we do it. Um, they are notified about it as they uh, sign up for their card. This may not be your library's cup of tea. This is what works for us. Um, it may not work at your library, but in our, in our minds, we are communicating information about the, the things that they want to learn 
and they can always opt out of our e-newsletter um, and they won't receive it anymore. They can also opt out of our print newsletter um, and circulation reminders as well. So sometimes they ask me to remove them and I'll do that as well. Um, also, just on a basic level, my uh, the library news update email is working for our customers and it's also getting recognition um, the, from the advertising industry. So um, the American Advertising Awards uh, awarded it an Addy Award, a Silver Addy Award uh, recently. So yeah, it's it's considered by, ad, by advertising world to be a very effective marketing tool in a way that they're even awarding um, awards for it at this point. So um, the question is how can your library do it? And so you'll have to do some homework. Um, you'll have to figure out, okay, what what kind of budget do we have? Um, with certain um, things, you buy it as a package, uh, you know, this many per year or, or whatever. Um, with some, you pay a monthly fee, depending on how big your list is. Um, with the one that we use, it, it, it increases based on our list size. And we do have a big list size, so for us, it's about $190 a month. Um, you have to figure out what what do you want to use. You want to use um, Library Aware, which is great. Um, there's other things out there, Constant Contact, Mailchimp. Um, you have to figure out how you're going to build your list. This is the kind of stuff that you know a good team can get together, put your heads together, and figure out what's best for your library. And then, of course, you want to make sure that you have steady streams of content. So your website and catalog content is going to be your stuff. Um, you want to link to that stuff in your in your e-news. That's why you're doing it. You're you're getting them more engaged in your library and what you have to offer. And then what kind of stories do you want to tell? Think about those big library goals. Um, think about what people aren't aware of that you would like them to be aware of, and determine who on your team is going to be doing the storytelling. Is it a, a team of people? Is it one person? Um, we want it to be consistent, but sometimes um, that just means setting up the right kind of template. Alrighty, so this is me in the kids' library, and this is called our dinosaur zone, but um, the kids also call it the dinosaur butt. <laughs> uh, they're going to call it whatever they want. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you all might have. So Leah, that was a great presentation, uh, very important information. And there were some questions as we went along that I wanted to pull out now, and then folks, as you have questions, go ahead and put them in and we'll take them. If for some reason we run out of time, we will continue answering the questions and it, they will be included on the recording. Okay, so this, early on you were talking about uh, segment uh, data from that you were using in your emails and there were a couple of questions about where do you pull your segment data from the patron database. Um, they were using Circe Dynex, Symphony. How, how do you, so the person who's doing those reports do you have anything to do with that, or is that that person? Is there a way that they're uh, pulling that information? I have support from our um, from our systems administrator, Shannon. She is, has that organized logical mind that um, she can take care of those things. But she's she's really pulling them from Excel spreadsheets and organizing them into lists that are accurate. Um, wonderful thing with sending the e-news through um, through a system is that you'll receive the bounces. You'll um, figure out, oh, this person's email address doesn't exist anymore, or they left that job, so that's not working. Um, so it's a really good way to make your list um, accurate. Um, so a lot of the old sort of Excel spreadsheets and things that we had people who opted in, they wanted to know um, information about our gallery, for instance. We are dusting off some of those lists and importing them into our system, making sure that they're accurate, up to date. And um, that's basically how we're doing it. Excellent, excellent. And I really love, too, that you're really looking at uh, different people's work that they're doing, the infographic, the person who's doing the infographic. I mean, this, and this is something that when we talk about e-newsletters, people are always saying, oh, I don't have time. But there's a lot of work going on in the library that they can use to pull in content. So that's really excellent. Absolutely. Um, like I said, uh, that data that our customers love so much, that's one one guy who works here at the library, that's what he does with half of his time. 
So why not use what he's already doing and promote that? Or, you know, our librarians are doing reader's advisory on our website already. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm pulling from. And the articles that are in our print newsletter, it's all there for you to take. You don't have to create new content. Yes, exactly. Uh, another question that was asked on program e-newsletters, do you send your programs all together for the month or each two weeks in chronological order without regard to age, demographics? In other words, are you breaking that into any different demographics and are your list broken into demographics so that, you, you know, some libraries that we talk to, they do teen mailings or adult mailings, kids, that kind of thing. We don't do um, segmentation on that level yet. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of sending to our entire cardholders, anybody who has an email address. Um, but, you know, we do, we do have an eye toward that. Um, we're getting ready to do some automation that's going to have some of that involved in it. Um, and we try to just reach all, when we're planning out our, our print and our website, we, we try to reach all demographics um, when it comes to things that might interest them. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're not on that level of segmentation yet, but it's definitely something we're thinking about. Cool. All right. Another question that was asked is, oh, there were some questions about content, copyright, concerns with photos and memes. Um, are you feeling comfortable answering that question, or is that something that should be addressed yeah. by the individual libraries? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel that I take, I take a, a lot of safety precautions when it comes to that kind of stuff. Just, you know, when I create a meme, I'm, I'm using, you know, a create a meme site, um, a GIF site. I'll, I'll use images from our catalog, which we own, um, to create things, or I'll use, I'll, I'll make sure that it's, uh, you know, from Wiki Commons. Um, and then we also have a stock website. That, that we use images from, um, that we pay monthly for that. And that really comes in handy for doing graphic design and you know, some of those headers and things that like the books and movies, um, those things are from our stock site. So it, it, does, it does pay off in the end to, to subscri subscribe to a stock site and to just make sure that you're using images that are, that are um, free to use. So yes, just, just be wary of those things. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you, someone had missed the beginning, you do do a print newsletter. Uh, how many, I believe you had said that you sent that out to all your residents at Topeka? Yes, your we print? send them out to every household, not just our card holders. So that's to 80,000 people, or 80,000 households and 180,000 people. Um, yeah, that's, that's huge. Um, so one of the questions that was put out to the group, and so we would love to hear this from the group as well as for you, Leah, is about collecting email addresses for newsletters. Uh, so there was some conversation going on. Do you have people opt in or opt out? So if people want to share that content in chat, that would be great. And you had mentioned that you just automatically put your people onto the list, right? They are notified um, that when they give us their email address that they will uh, receive communications and we make it very easy for them to opt out. Um, there's, a, there's a link at the bottom of the email, um, and it's a one-click deal, and if they, if, uh, they need my help, I will, opt, I will unsubscribe them as well. Right, that makes sense. Uh, someone wanted to know best days or times to send emails. It sounds like you pretty much stay on a set schedule and send out things, or are you trying to tweak that according to what you think the best times are to receive emails? Um, I typically send out my email right uh, before the end of the work day. I kind of, just judging from my own experience, sometimes it's when I'm losing concentration <laughs> and, um, and I would like a little diversion, especially if it's, you know, something fun and, and that's going to go quickly. And so I, I'll send it out around 4.50 or 5 o'clock. Um, and that seems to be working well for us. Uh, sometimes I'll jog it and send it out um, earlier in the day. And, you know, that just, it just depends. Um, it also, to be frank, it depends on when I get it done. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, I think everyone can relate to that. Uh, but there is <laughs> the opportunity to schedule things too, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, so open rates related to demographics are, 
do you have a way of telling uh, the age group of people that are opening your emails? I guess without the segmentation, you really don't have that, right? No, I don't have any way of knowing the age group of of people. We don't we don't track that information on that that minute of a level at this point. Gotcha. Now, what about uh, let's see? Oh, of course, this question is going to come up because everyone's sitting there in awe about you, and they want to know how large a staff do you have that that you do all of this. You're a lone person with the e with an e-newsletter, right? Yes. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it's going to depend on your library. We are overachievers here, I think. Um, we have a we have a marketing staff of three people, but we also have support from our librarians, um, from our web team. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of cooks that are stirring this pot. Um, before I actually go to my um, email service and put the news the news together. So, yeah, I'm doing a lot of work with this, and pretty much every other week my whole day is shot um, doing this. But, again, the return on, on investment is, is very valuable to us, and I do have a lot of help from others who are creating content already. Right, right. That makes perfect sense. Um, do you work together with your teammates on the overall look, and do each of you have parts that are responsible for and have the final say in that area? So I think you kind of covered this whole design thing uh, before, but is there anything that you want to add about the design? Um, yeah, the design is actually um, pretty close to what we have on our website, and it sort of happened um, organically that way. So every um, article that's posted on our website has a 600 by 280 pixel graphic at the top of it. It's called the featured image. And that's what I grab and use in my e-news. And it just happens mm -hmm. to be a cascading feed type of thing with those 600 uh, pixel wide images, a little bit of text, a button to link to. And it's, it's really just dovetailed um, the web content just dovetailed perfectly into our e-news. And so it was just form meets function type of thing with that. Um, we, my team does, a, we have a graphic designer who, if he's, cre he's created, a, you know, a lot of the graphics that I take and appropriate for this purpose. And then my supervisor, Diana Friend, she is the director here. She always takes a look at it and she'll give me a call and we'll talk about different things that could be improved, um, or she'll say, hit the send button. And so that's kind of how, it, how the process happens. Oh, that's excellent. There's a lot of questions about uh, technical help with MailChimp and um, blacklisting. I prefer not to get to, into those in this particular uh, webinar, but we can, Leah can answer things on via uh, email back individually, but I think those are, are pretty specific to talk about. Um, I think, let's see, if there's any other questions that we may have missed. I think that's pretty much it. I think there's been a lot of questions about the segmentation, mm -hmm. uh, your images, so are you going with BiblioCommon CMS or just BiblioCore Catalog? Again, um, that's more about the catalog itself. The slides will be made available. Um, as far as emails going to spam, while Leah uses um, MailChimp, every library provider uh, has works to make sure that um, they're not blacklisted. But as far as spam goes, isn't that something that the individual browsers, I think, Leah, for example, Gmail does some sorting through Outlook. Spam yes. is on an, yeah, so. Yes. And, and again, you just want to, with those subject lines, that it's really important with those to not be spammy. Um, words like free or, you mm -hmm. know, those, those are, they might get sent to your spam folder quicker than, or, you know, big sale or, you know, those, those spammy type marketing words you probably don't want to use. You want to use words that real people would use. Um, exactly. And then Julia has a quick question about your click-through rate for your newsletters. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, 
we, we tend to get, you know, over a thousand uh, hits per per email um, we have a good click through rate uh, but again it's you know um, it's not totally about about that it's it's about impressions um, and like I said it's funny that our trivia answer is the is typically the most clicked thing in our e-news but what that tells me is that they scrolled through the entire thing before they got there um, exactly they spent the time to do that um, but yeah, we we receive a big wave of of website hits um, because of the e news. It's really just a, a connector um, from the e news to our site. Yes, and you know I have to read this aloud because uh, this is from um, this is I think a big part of their success is her snappy writing style and great images. I've subscribed for years. I live nowhere near, near Topeka, and I just love the writing and great pictures. Very engaging. Um, I think that's true. We have, uh, when we had our book squad start to do their emails, we're seeing that they write, it's fun writing, it's relevant content to the people that are receiving it, and their open rate is through the roof and their clicks are crazy. So if you're writing something that really matters to people, they're going to want to read it. So I think I think that's very true. Yeah. Um, everybody that's thinks this content. is... Pardon me? It has to be good content. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's, that's number one. Exactly. Okay. Um, one person said they don't reinvent the paper brochures. They JPEG them and send them out. Um, is that not recommended? So this is a case where, you know, and we see this all the time. Libraries are working on their print newsletter, and they just want a way to take that print newsletter, attach it as a JPEG, and send it out in their e-newsletter. Uh, what's your thought on that? I, I would advise against attachments. Um, that's if it's assuming that they want to take that extra step to receive that information. Um, and you know, the internet is is such a different format than print. Um, it's just consumed differently. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, people people want bigger images. They want buttons. They want things that are more internety. You know. Um, right. And, and attachments just as PDFs especially, I, I think it is a is not the best way to go. Um, it, it's assuming that the customer wants that particular thing um, that they want. It's an extra layer. It's an extra mm -hmm. step for them to have to click through. Some some uh, you know my my junky little phone doesn't have um, it doesn't automatically open PDFs, and it's if if I do open it with an app, it's going to be teeny tiny. Um, so I would just suggest, you know, it, it's worth the time to put together something that's more geared toward the internet um, and less like something print that was slapped into um, into a PDF and attached. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. We're two minutes out of two o'clock. Um, the only question I think we haven't really addressed is ADA accessibility requirements. Are you doing anything with your email? Uh, regarding ADA accessibility, such as um, yeah, we're using alternative text on our images mm -hmm. um, so that if you know if if they're not and that works too if if somebody doesn't turn on the images in their email like in Outlook for instance, then they can still read what that image was supposed to be, um, you know. So so yeah, we're making sure that that we're providing accessibility with that, and we do that on our website as well. We do that with our videos and. And yeah, that's it's very important to us. Excellent, excellent. Okay, uh, this has been an excellent webinar. We will be sending links and uh, to the recording. Uh, thank you so much, Leah. The PowerPoint was just beautiful. The presentation, information, everything was excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. I really enjoyed it. Thanks. All right, everyone. Take care.